Hey man. Yo. Okay, I, I can't hear you. You unmute. We haven't unmute yet. Oh yeah, yeah. Hang on, just hang on. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. just changed my background. Loud and clear. <laughs> right, loud and clear. Uh, I've already made you co-host as well, so if I'm on the okay. chat, you can Spotlight. change the camera and stuff. But I, I think I think okay. you'll be doing most of the demonstrating today, so I'll be controlling yep. most of the camera. Yep. So everything okay with you today? Yeah. Excellent. Um, a little bit nervous because I have not tried yet. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's scary. It's all good. I've only done it okay. like two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, uh, let me adjust a little bit of the brightness of this light over here. Oh, pro light. I uh, know it's just uh, easier for me to uh, show in the camera later because it will be very dim over here. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So just while uh, Dennis is settling up, um, I'll just uh, go through a little bit what we'll go through today. Um, so Dennis has never performed a D-scale before on the DE1, so we thought what best opportunity to you know demonstrate it is is a, a real life situation where you know uh, and 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 some guidance from someone who has done it. Now um, some of the things that we will be going through is. Um, you know, why do we need to descale, uh, when and how? Um, and as well as some of the other things involved, um, like the thimble and the water tank and how it also can affect your machine is, is some areas that uh, I think some people may overlook. So we will be going through some of the reasons and the techniques involved. And um, perhaps we'll also touch on um, some of the way in which other commercial machines are descaled uh, and the process uh, that is involved there and how it differs with the D1. And um, so um, it will be um, quite a long process in terms of the D scale in that um, it does take a few cycles to go through. Um, but as we will demonstrate, we'll also discuss what is kind of happening with the D scale. And um, um, so while everyone's kind of settling into the Zoom, um, if anyone does have any questions before the off start, um, doesn't have to be anything related to this topic, can be anything decent related, um, just pop it in the chat or just hijack the microphone and just ask away and we'll answer it before we start. Um, so mm -hmm. while anyone's just typing questions or mustering up the courage, I'll just differentiate um, the clean function and the descale function, um, which we, which the clean function we did in the last previous Zoom. Um, if you miss a Zoom, that is up on the uh, advert link, and um, you can kind of go through that process as well. But the main difference between the clean and the descale um, is that um, the steam water pathway is included um, as a, as the part of the cleaning process. Whereas the cleaning process um, only does the uh, group head and the flush valve pathway. So it bypasses the uh, steam pathway processes. But um, similar to the uh, cleaning function, you are required to put citric acid into the water tank uh, with hot water, of course, and to the right concentration. So um, uh, how are things going in your end, Dennis? Everything okay? We all ready to go? Yeah, really okay. Excellent. I have all the things I need right now. So perhaps that uh, full disclosure over here, um, I've got my machine over here, uh, arrived in, uh, in my place around March, end of March. So ever since I have not performed any descale, and through my commercial and home usage of uh, environment, uh, I've never have any experience on the water problem. Uh, I'm blessed to stay in uh, Malaysia which has uh, quite balanced and soft water. Mm. And we are using water filter all the time. And uh, so, yeah, so I never have any scale problem and to the extent it uh, clock up my machine and some other parts. I never have that in also as well in, as well as in a commercial um, a cafe environment as well. So this is my first time. Um, so let's try. So hmm. Paul, uh, I heard that before we do this scale, we need to transport mode. We need to 
Right, um, water, water, right? We, uh, you can do, but you can just start it without it. Um, we will touch mm -hmm. upon transport mode later on as a uh, process okay. you can add in onto the pro uh, onto the cycle, which will help clean the uh, citric acid from the pipelines a bit quicker. Um, so okay. what um, Dennis is referring to is essentially the transport mode uh, feature, which uh, mm -hmm. t it drains out essentially all the water in the pathways. And um, we mentioned this before because the D1 is so trans uh, is is so portable. Um, it's an extra safety feature that we've included just in case anything does come loose uh, and potentially damage your internals. So um, we've kind of used this, uh, or some users have found this as a bit of a hack to kind of speed in the process up. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll we'll introduce that a bit later on. Uh, but essentially, uh, what you'll be doing today, Dennis, is, is just using the Dscale function uh, and uh, okay. processing it through, uh, I think, probably three, maybe four times, but we'll see how we go, uh, and we'll see how the okay. time limit goes as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, just, just out of curiosity, Dennis, um, do you know what your, um, like, Malaysia's water in terms of calcium content is? I have no idea. Okay, well, that's, <laughs> to be honest, that's, I have all right. no idea. that's all right. Um, it's kind of um, a, a very interesting subject. In mm. that there's been a lot of debate yeah. on on diaspora, especially uh, in terms of you know, do we need calcium in water? Um, but mm. you know, I think the topic is still ongoing. Um, but I mm. think what is good about this topic, it is making more people aware of what is in their water and how it affects their machine. Um, so yeah. the debate is still out there whether we need calcium or not. Some believe that it yeah. adds, um, you know, uh, uh, more sweetness and, sweetness. and, and more sweetness, body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but some people believe that you don't need it in there at all. Um, mm -hmm. Personally, I believe it's kind of quite subjective. It's, you know, taste again. Um, but I do sort of see the logic behind both arguments. Um, but where mm -hmm. we can really say for sure and where all parties agreed on is that any calcium in water uh, will form scale. So regardless of what, uh, what water chemistry you prefer in terms of what it comes out in taste, um, if you have any calcium in there, uh, and you are, you know, using that water with the D1, um, this is where we really sort of stress that, um, you know, keeping on top of your scale internally is the better way to go instead of waiting till there's a problem. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that's, that's uh, quite interesting in that, you know, I think a lot of people don't really know what their calcium content is in their water, uh, but I think that's uh, the general consensus. Any calcium in there will, will create scale. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Um, I, I have this, um, how do I find out whether I have how much content of calcium in my water? That's a really I, good question. I don't see if there's any website from my, uh, I don't think there's any support information of my uh, water supply, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. local water supply. Okay. And as well as I, I bought few bottles of, um, I've tried to notice uh, labels yeah. from the mineral water bottle, bottle waters, as well as our water, mineral water, you know, um, but they most of them they do not list down the water property. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so for the for the water bottle pond um, point, it's it's um, you can buy you know uh, in in fish uh, in pet stores like uh, they have aquarium testers. Um, and then, mm -hmm. and you know, some of them are like the, the pH sort of litmus test, a similar thing where you grade it against a mm -hmm. color uh, and you mm -hmm. match the color with accordance to how, how, how concentrated your solution is. Um, mm -hmm. Other points in terms of um, um, local water suppliers, um, I'm not sure what the, what the compliance laws are in Malaysia, but most countries, uh, their local uh, water company will be uh, required to supply their testing results on their website. So even if mm -hmm. it's not on their website, you may be able to uh, get in contact with your local water supplier and request for the test data uh, that they do. Um, if you know it's if they don't have it, then um, you know you can get it lab tested, but it is a lot more expensive. Um, hence, why mm -hmm. a lot more, more people go for the you know the aquarium sets. Um, okay. Beyond that, if you are really um, 
uh, you know, uh, quite worked up and want you know ease of mind over this. You know, most people would go to the filtration route, um, and and there is another added complication in that even if you get the water constituted from the local water supplier, um, by the time it gets to your premises, um, depending on how far away you are. Um, that travel distance will leach out anything in the pipes and things like that. So the water chemistry will yeah. change to a certain extent. So it is generally mm -hmm. better to test it at home. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, in all fairness, most people just use the easiest route. So it's either a filtration or maybe a Brita filter or maybe mineral water mm -hmm. that is working and tasting great for them. Um, but mm -hmm. most cases, I would say that they would have calcium involved unless they're using RO. Uh, which filters mm. out all the all the all the TDS of the water. Um, mm -hmm. So, but that's a very good question. Um, and 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 y we go back to the um, the kettle analogy. Um, if you mm -hmm. don't know and you 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 know you're not too sciencey or, or, or savvy on the chemistry, you can just view your kettle. Uh, and if you have scale forming in your kettle, then you need to look at treatment of your water for the DE1. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's quite a wild subject. But um, yeah, that's our recommendations: uh, mineralized water, bottled water, or filtered water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Shall we? Yeah. Shall yeah, we yeah. begin? Excellent. Yeah, okay. So um, I have this recipe. I bought um, citric acid. I uh, let me. Okay, let me turn on this camera and uh, show it to you. There you go. Um, just measure this 300 grams of food grade citric acid. Mm -hmm. okay. And I have uh, boiled some water. Right now, it's supposed to be around, let me test this. It's supposed to be around below 60. Mm. Uh, right now, it's 67. So, a bit, uh, let me cool down a little bit more. So, uh, what should I do right now? Should I just pull out the water tank and. Uh, Yep. Yeah, okay. Let me get well, this. while we're waiting for the, the water, you can. Uh, we could go through the, the water tank and the thimble. Um, mm -hmm. And if people aren't familiar with the thimble, this the thimble is the uh, the stainless steel mesh on the water in okay, line pipe, uh, which is on right, the towards the back. Thimble up. Okay. Thimble is supposed to be here. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let me get this out. Right. I just clean this. Just clean this. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks clean. Two days ago. Okay. Weekly schedule. I will. Uh, I haven't cleaned yeah. mine, so I can get mine out. And, and I think I think I've, mm -hmm. I've had a brief look earlier, uh, and mine's got a bit of a gunk on it. So. What do you recommend how to clean it, uh, Paul? Um, Should I just, just clean it with clean water? Yeah, just normal water or um, you know kitchen detergent and give it a good rinse. Um, mm -hmm. It's not um, it's not a, an essentially difficult part to clean, um, mm -hmm. but my one is a little bit dirty. You can see some brown on there. And, oh yeah. Um, let me just add me onto the screen. Okay. Um, so, water. so mine has got a little bit of debris inside, and um, the holes aren't aren't quite clear through. And um, what has happened is that um, the water uh, or the bacteria inside the water um, eventually forms what we we've been calling a biofilm. And um, this biofilm is 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 a is a byproduct of the bacteria uh, um, forming colonies. So the, the 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 biofilm just essentially protects the colonies from disruption, and they can you know easily multiply and, and make a home. Uh, but what happens with the functionality of this this uh, uh, thimble is that um, it blocks the water coming through, and if it gets really severe. Um, it can actually affect the pressure in shots at certain points of extraction. So if this gets really mm -hmm. clogged up, like maybe you've not cleaned it for you know three, four months, um, it will start to affect the efficiency of your pumps and, and make your pumps work harder as it's trying to draw out water. Um, so it is mm -hmm. in the best interest to keep this uh, item quite clean. And you know while you're doing this process and taking the tank out, um, you you know while it's out, you can just 
give it a clean and and um, well, at the very least, just stick your finger in the in the in the water tank. And if mm -hmm. it's slimy, um, you're feeling that biofilm, and it, it's about time to give it a change. And obviously, if you mm -hmm. don't clean your water tank very clean, the uh, amount of bacteria that will form will, uh, you know, increase exponentially and, and will clog up quicker. So it's not, mm -hmm. you know, you need to clean both. You can't just clean one. Um, and yeah, so it's a very easy thing to do. You know, it will take you five minutes. Um, but uh, the, uh, you know, not doing it will be very, uh, you'll be head scratching your head at the very least. Um, yep. Yeah. I have that experience as well. My shot, my every shot shot up into like 13 bar. But <laughs> I was, I was scratching my head. What was what, going on? I, the, the setting over there shows uh, 9 bar, but uh, it shots up every shot. It shots up to 13, 14, wow. 12, you know. So, so after I clean that, then back to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was a time that I have not cleaned at all. Right, right. I didn't clean a lot. Yeah, I think it was like four months. I never cleaned. Right, right. I didn't yeah. realize it actually went up to the maximum bar. I never realized yep. that. That's the uh, that's re so it's really sort yep. of trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something wrong at the taste, and the taste of it is really bitter. Yes. Every single shot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I learned my lesson. So <laughs> I will just you know right now every week for yeah. two hours just pluck out and. Uh, Clean it up, especially with um, you and me, Dennis. You know, we're in we're in hot hot environments, and and you know that just cultures these these bacterial colonies. Uh, but what I will say is, you know, if you do keep on top of it, you know, there's nothing to be worried about about these you know bacteria in your tank. You know, I I know some people get really worried when we we talk about this biofilm, uh, and you know some people want to look to cover up the tank, which some members have done. Um, it will sort of prolong, you know, the freshness of the water. Um, but uh, yeah, it's as long as you're cleaning it regularly, you're not you're not really in any harm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And as well, it I I have no idea why that uh, after before I clean, um, the shot was not just thirteen bar. Hmm. It stops prematurely, like ten grams, uh -huh. eight right. grams. Just stop. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, even though I said like 30, uh, 28, 29, it's just stop at um, 10 grams, 14 grams range. Right. So after I clean that up, uh, everything's soft. Everything just soft, yeah. Mm, mm. So essentially choked the machine and the, and the machine just stopped. Oh, wow. Probably. Wow. Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, now it's back to normal. It's been, uh, it's, I think it's been two months, one and a half months, mm. working perfect normally. Just normal right now. Okay, uh, I think the water is about the right temperature right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shall we? Yes, shall I put the uh, the solution into the water tank? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's try. Um, let so me turn on uh, how, how many how many grams of citric acid have we done again? I think did you mention? Before? Um, it's three hundred. Three hundred. Yeah. Yeah, 300, yeah. yeah. So I'll just dump this in. And... Choop. Just like that. Now Remember it does seem like a lot, rate. right? It does seem like yeah, a lot. Yeah, it seems like a lot. Um, yep. But we, we recommend this recipe, right? Because we, yep. we, we don't want a weaker solution. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's, a, if it's too weak, it won't do this job. So we need to make sure that it's the right concentration. All right, this around um, one point, it's supposed to be 1.2, but just now I just uh, over top. Mm -hmm. So right now it's 1.5, so I'll try to make it 1.2. Yep. Let me check how much left. Okay, more to go. All right, a bit more. Around that, a mm -hmm. bit more to go, yep. Around that, yeah. So done, around 1.2 liters. So right now, I'll just scrap it, trying to dissolve the solution, the citric acid powder. Are you finding it quite difficult to mix in, um, or do you feel like it's dissolving quite easily? It's dissolving when I pour in hot water already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right now, just something at the bottom right now, mm -hmm. some 
some powder at the bottom right now. Let me just spread, spread through slowly. Yep. Do you think that the hot water is recommended due to just to solve, dissolve all the solution over here? Uh, actually, I, the, I, I, the first time I did it, I, I have to admit something, I did it with cold water. And mm -hmm. um, what I found was it was really difficult to, to mix in. And uh, I was actually oh, going to okay. mention this point, and, and that's why I kind of asked, is it easy to mix in? Um, because I think that uh, uh, it, having that hot, you know, hot temperature to, to get this, you know, the, to get all the powder mixed in uh, makes it a lot easier than with cold water. Um, yeah. And I, and I believe that right the, the extra temperature as well will help the efficiency of the, you know, the citric acid solution to dissolve away the scale that may be inside. Um, whereby mm -hmm. if it was, you know, just heated by the machine, which it will do eventually, um, you know, you have that momentary where it's not as hot as it could be. So uh, I believe it has double effect of helping it dissolve and also helping with dissolving the scale inside the machine quicker. Um, All right, it's done. Cool. I just load it in right now. Okay, oh, I have to use careful. two hands right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, going to say. <laughs> it's heavy, right? It's yeah. very heavy. Maybe put down this. And uh, load it up. Now, if you do have sensitive hands, it is acidic. So you know, if you if you are worried about your hands, do wear gloves. But um, if you do get in on your hands, you can just wash it off. It's not too uh, concentrated, but um, gloves are an option. Okay, done. All right, loaded. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me put back the drip tray just in case. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll just head up into machine. Yep. D scale. Into D scale. So ah. it shows, the manual shows that uh, uh, reminders us to prepare something. Yep. So let's, uh, let's just done. read through the instructions so we can kind of just go through a bit thoroughly. So it says to remove mm -hmm. the drip tearing cover. Okay. Yep. Uh, the tank one and a half lot really is hot water with 300 grams of citric acid powder, which we've done. And a mm -hmm. blind basket in the porter filter. Ah, so we need okay. to load a blind basket in the porter filter as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Let me get the blind filter. Yep. So the function of the blind filter is is obviously to make sure water doesn't come out of the group head and it flushes out through the uh, uh, um, uh, drain um, the the flush valve the forward flush valve and um, if you didn't have it there then your actual descale process won't actually be completed to its uh, to how it was designed so it is important to include the blind porter filter. So essentially what will happen... All right, got it. Oh, yep. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, just let me load it up. Okay. Then shall I put this picture, empty picture in over here? Uh, you can do, just to catch if anything yeah. does come out. Um, yep. Chances are it, it uh, probably won't for now, but we'll, we'll, we'll just uh, go through now. So let the next step is... Let me just descale now. Yeah, descale now. All right, it's running. Oh, the oh chippy barra. okay, chippy <laughs> <laughs> Okay, chippy barra again. Okay, so the machine will basically, you know, start taking up the uh, the, the the citric acid solution from the tank through the uh, inlet pipe at the back, and it <clears> will, um, if you can, go to a, a eye level view, Dennis, if you can, mm -hmm. uh, down to the tank. I don't know if we can mm -hmm. see, but we, you can actually hear the water coming back into the drain, into the tank. Um, so if you could go a little bit higher. Uh, so you, now you can see the water coming out into the uh, flush valve. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and notice how it's oh. kind of like a little bit thicker, right? Thick. It's more, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, thick. It's thick. Yeah. So, like just like lemonade. Yeah, yeah, like a little syrup, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's quite clean, so this is a good sign. Sometimes this might mm -hmm. be a bit brown or a bit cloudy. 
Um, but you know, it's nothing to be alarmed bluish. about. Yeah, uh, bluish. Um, I've never yeah. seen bluish, but um, put potentially from the brass, but I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But um, this is quite a normal process, and um, don't be alarmed to see water coming out of the flush valve. But as well as mm -hmm. it coming out of the flush valve, um, if you are not aware, the water tank also has a return pipe as well, which is towards the front left behind the, the dripping water we see, that we can see. And mm -hmm. uh, what that valve does is um, it's also used in the preheat cycle when your tank preheats your water tank. And mm -hmm. what the DU1 is doing as well is also pushing some of the citric acid solution back through that valve and also back to mm -hmm. the tank. Okay. okay. So all the pathways it's loading are, right now. Yep. So all the pathways are just kind of getting soaked in the in the solution and then it's being released uh, momentarily. All right. Yep. And uh, this will take around forty minutes. Um, the first the cycles will maybe like five minutes or less, but the whole process mm -hmm. will take around forty minutes. And the whole reason. So it, yep. So how do I know it's when it's done? It's just like uh, oh. the clean or the clean function. Yeah. The, so the screen will, 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 the will pop out and and will will say it's complete. And what you uh -huh. will notice is that you know it actually dispenses a very little amount of water. I think it's it's yeah. it's about a hundred milliliters. So you know what has been dispensed there right there is probably an ounce, maybe two ounces. So about fifty, mm -hmm. sixty milliliters. Um, but the tank mm -hmm. is still full. Is what you'll notice. So. What we have um, uh, introduced is to uh, uh, continue this cycle at least three, maybe four times. Um, mm -hmm. I think in your case, you could probably get away with three because the water coming out of your flush valve is very clean. Uh, okay. And as you've mentioned, you know, uh, Malaysian water is, 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 seems to be quite soft. And mm -hmm. um, I can see a little fleck of something that just came out there. It could be a coffee debris, but it could have been something else. But it's already gone down no. the drain hole. Um, but this time the water doesn't look as thick and it looks like it's yep. trickling a little bit more. Um, so mm -hmm. we can hopefully presume that the, the solution is doing its job and it's dissolving the, uh, the scale in the pipeways. And, mm -hmm. um, I think this will happen one more time before the cycle finish and we'll just mm -hmm. restart the process again and, okay. uh, re, re, um, cause you know, if it's only a hundred ML, uh, we'll, we, we mm -hmm. pass in three times, that'll be three times as much. So we're just making sure that it is properly flushed out, um, well, mm -hmm. f flush with the citric acid solution, and um, you know we've got a good thorough soak at the good concentration. So okay. similar to how we use the back flush for you know for so for, for the blind flushing, um, mm -hmm. water is essentially coming from the tank rather than from the group head itself, and that's okay. how it covers so all the pathways. Yep. So is that okay for the users to uh, finish? Just now, I I've added like one point three liter mm -hmm. of uh, the hot water, mm -hmm. and then with the solution. So uh, is that okay to run it until it's empty? Yes. Yes. The water tank. Um, yeah. For sure. Um, my first time, I actually realized how little the the process did, and I actually ran it all the way through. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I did this one because I was doing it on a machine that had never been descaled, and it was, uh, okay. I believe it was an older model, uh, DE1 Plus. Mm -hmm. um, so I mm -hmm. made sure I did a pro proper thorough job on it and, and used the entire tank. Now, I, I don't mm -hmm. believe that is necessary, um, especially if we're making sure we've got the solution up to concentrate and mm -hmm. um, we're running it three, maybe four times, and we're doing that once or twice a year. So bear in mind, you know, that machine had been running for three plus years and it hadn't been descaled, mm -hmm. it didn't have a problem. Uh, and so, you know, I was wanted peace of mind that I wanted to get the, the job thoroughly done. So if, let's okay. say, you know, you have never done it before, um, I don't mm -hmm. think it would uh, be a bad idea to run the whole tank through. But just bear mm -hmm. in mind that it will take a, a fairly long time. You may have to run it maybe eight to ten times for the whole tank to go mm -hmm. through. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's, it's depending on your time. So you, this is why we mm -hmm. introduce scheduling it once or twice a year rather than doing it all in one go. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, 
So now you can see oh, some I can of the smell steam the coming sourness. out. Yeah. I can smell the sourness right now. That's right. That's <laughs> oh, right. choking my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Now, some people do put a bit of uh, water in there to kind of, you know, mm -hmm. stop that steam coming out and, and having that, that oh. smell. Um, mm -hmm. But, it, you know, it, it's it's just personal preference, really. <laughs> Personally, I do I um, because I, I don't like the smell of vinegar. So this process, I yep. was like, mm, you know. Um, but oh. the good thing about mm. this is that because citric acid has that distinct sour and and sort of it's almost like a vinegar smell once it's gone through and leached out the, yeah. the calcium um it's not like that lemon citrus that we usually expect from uh, citric acid so um mm -hmm. this process for me was a little bit um not as keen to do because i personally don't like vinegar um so mm -hmm. but the good thing is that because it's a very uh, familiar taste to a lot of people you know when you clean all your pathways of the citric acid because you one you won't be able to smell it the smell will disappear mm -hmm. first but the taste will disappear last so even if you don't mm -hmm. smell it in your water it's always good just to you know just to give it a little taste you don't have to put a whole spoonful in just dab, put your finger in dab it on your tongue it will react on your tongue um, mm -hmm. but only do that when you can't smell it um, because if you do that when it you can smell it it's quite intense and it's, ooh, it's like a sucking a lemon <laughs> <laughs> the the color of this solution is kind of like greenish, little bit yeah. kind of greenish, kind it of is. greenish, yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Definitely, no, it's not, it's not transparent. Yeah. So it's kind of good that um, you know we have that visual uh, result as well from this process, um, mm -hmm. and this is from you know uh, I think this is quite. This is quite clean, to be honest, Dennis. I've seen, I've mm -hmm. seen some. Um, the one I was doing that hadn't been done, you know, milk was coming out and uh, little specks of foreign matter. Do you, do you mean there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of debris and yeah. uh, there are a lot of films, mm -hmm. white color films? Um, the debris would be black, and it would be most likely be burnt milk. Um, caused Chart, by yeah. sucking up of the milk uh, as the mm -hmm. uh, depressurization of the uh, uh, the steam wand. So you, there is mm -hmm. a vacuum effect um, that is uh, does appear. Uh, but with proper mm -hmm. technique, if you the you know if you remove the steam wand during the uh, the pressure down, you know when it going to go. <clears throat> uh, if you kind of mm -hmm. take it off halfway through that sound, um, you'll never really find the the milk being sucked up into the heater. And that mm. kind of brings up a really good point too, in that um, the citric acid is the only thing we're recommending uh, from Decent to go into the mm -hmm. steam heaters. Um, we've had uh, it. We I think I believe we've had a test to look into you know the components that we have, the materials that they're made of, and um, all like let's say for example the uh, silicon tubing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the Ultim, you know, it's all safe with citric acid. So um, mm -hmm. this is why we recommend citric acid because we know that anything it touches in terms of through the water pathways, through the heaters, um, we can be safe to say and, and can assure users that it is safe to use inside our machine. Um, mm -hmm. We've had users that have used, you know, other things to go into the steam heaters. Like I, I believe you mentioned... Someone asking if they could put kafitsa in the water tank. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was a big no-no. Um, I think Ray. I believe I've read something from Ray um, about you know only putting citric acid in because of these testings. Um, you know mm -hmm. some things that we've tried to look for in terms of has this chemical been tested and can we use it inside the D1. Um, we've not found the answers for. So even if some people do use it and have said that it is safe to use on their machine, um, mm -hmm. we will not recommend it purely because we don't have that data to back it up. Um, so that's why we, we use citric acid. Um, other benefits are it's readily available, it's cheap, you know, you can buy it in bulk, um, doesn't really go off mm -hmm. as long as you keep uh, it dry and away from humidity. Um, even then, you know, it will just clump up and you can put it in a plastic bag and use a hammer on it and it'll crush out again. So, how's that water looking there? Is oh there any God. debris? I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I see some, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm seeing some debris inside. 
Don't worry, don't worry. It's actually, it's, it's, it's really not that bad, Dennis. So don't be embarrassed about it. Um, it's really not that bad. Um, some chart, yeah, some chart black uh, color uh, debris. Yeah, it's inside, yeah. Okay. But better out than in, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's not that bad. Just few few pieces right now. Mm -hmm. So the, I think the one so, I did, um, um, I had brown. You, 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 you brown. have any idea what the use of citric acid? Like I bought this from a bakery ingredient store. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I, I have no idea why they <laughs> selling this. So, so it's. Um, you know what was this for? It's uh, so I used to buy it from the same place, um, from bakery stores, okay. and um, yeah. I used to buy it for tasting classes for sensory, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I used it to, you know, obviously show users uh, uh, what what citric acid tastes like and how it reacts on your tongue mm -hmm. with no flavor, um, and what they yeah. used it for was uh, coatings of sweets, um, like fizzy mm -hmm. cola sweets. Um, it's exactly the same thing. Um, but uh, yeah, so 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 the bakery industry uses it as well, um, you know. Mm -hmm. And and the most common way I used to describe it was fizzy cola sweets. And um, you know, we coffee professionals uh, who favour acidity, um, we prefer mm -hmm. it. And I use the analogy of you have fizzy cola sweets that have the the citric acid on the outside, and you have the ones that don't. Um, mm -hmm. I always find that I I always eat the ones with the coating of citric acid. Um, because they're mm -hmm. more refreshing and they're not as rich tasting. Whereas, you know, I probably only have four or five of the other ones rather than the whole pack. Um, and that's what I, I, happens with coffee. If it's, you know, got that interest, interesting acidity, I'm there. I'm not, I'm always tasting it. Um, so that's a, it's a kind of a cool little story. Uh, I used to buy it from the bakery shops too. <laughs> I see. I see. First time I'm buying this, yeah. So yeah, no yeah. idea what is it for. Yeah. I've just Googled it, uh, the citrus acid nearby, and uh, it's, it show it directs me to the bakery store. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the process is done right now. Okay. Shall I do it one more time? Yep, yep. But before you do, um, let's just show the mm -hmm. users um, how full your tank is and actually, okay. you know, um, uh, and how much one will actually use with a full tank. Um, okay. All right, let me wrap this up. Uh, put my let me put this down first. Yep. Okay. Okay. So someone has asked in the chat room that mm -hmm. do I leave the thimble out? I did not. I did not leave my thimble. It is attached in the 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 inlet. Yep, the water so inlet. over here. And that's a very yep. good question um, because. The water does return, some water does return back into the tank during the descale process. So if we didn't have that filter in, um, some debris could get re-sucked back up. So it is important to reattach the thimble. Yeah, Yeah, um, it just used up probably like 100 mil over, mm -hmm. still a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just put it back in. And Brian has also asked, um, is the descaling process causing the steam on to drip? Or do we need to turn on the steam one to flush the citric acid through? Um, both is correct, Brian. Um, the, the descale process includes the steam one pathway. And that is what you're seeing is the uh, a citric acid solution from the water tank being pumped around the internals. Uh, and then obviously one of them is through the, through the uh, steam one. Uh, now, Dennis alluded earlier that do I want the uh, mm -hmm. milk jug to obviously catch that water? You can just have it dripping yeah. into your um, um, into your drip tray, uh, like the flush valve. Yeah. But you know, just for yeah. curiosity's sake, um, most people will catch it in the milk jug to see if anything is going to come out. And, yeah, what's, um, the, what's going on? Yes, yes, exactly. Mm. So it's yep. it's personal preference, really. And um, but where we you are required to have one is you know if you are flushing your uh, when you finish the descale process and we're flushing all the citric acid out out of your uh, pathways, in which case you know you can steam into a jug um, to control mm -hmm. the steam a bit more. Yeah. Sh shall I? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Okay. One more time. 
I forgot to actually note the time when we started the process. So the time down on here is mm. 44 minutes on my recording. So I'll just note the time for when this finishes and uh, we can kind of calculate if you do it three, maybe five times, how roughly how long it will take in total. You're yeah, right. Okay. So it's pumping in, it's pumping in right now. Mm. So what do I do after, let's say I've emptied the tank? Okay. So right after that, what do I do? So right after I'm, so obviously uh, it has it's very sour. Yes. You know? Yeah. So what do I do after that? Yeah. So after that, you know, um, if, mm. I think we'll probably do it maybe three times, maybe four times, depending on the time, because mm -hmm. we do need to clean yeah. the pathways. Um, so mm -hmm. I think we'll do it one or two more times after this. Uh, but mm -hmm. after that, we will empty and give the water tank a bit of a clean. Um, mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is I'll introduce the transport mode at that point to kind of clear out all the remaining citric acid in the water pathways. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we will put fresh water in the water tank, reprime mm -hmm. the motors, and then um, um, start the descale process again. Uh, just mm -hmm. one more time. So that will, you okay. know, make sure the, the pathways are clean with fresh water. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll repeat that again. The same thing. So we'll, okay. re we will take out the water tank because some water will be re, re put back into the water tank from the descale process. So we need to clean it. Mm -hmm. So, and then we'll put fresh mm -hmm. water back in and then one more time. And then after that, we will flush, uh, run the hot water spout and run the steam pathway. Um, basically, trial and error, tasting the water as we go to make sure it's all cleaned mm. out. Uh, mm. And only after, you know, we're satisfied that there is no more taste of the citric acid is when the, the process finishes. Okay. okay. So um, bear in mind, you know, this is right only now. once or twice a year, depending on your usage. And, um, you know, I think we've discussed previously if it's, you know, you, you're making five to ten coffees a day, once or twice a year is all you'll need. Um, mm -hmm. If you're making anything more of that, then you really have to look into you know how hard your water is and uh, really how many coffees you're making. Um, if you're making more than you know 200 coffees a month or maybe even in two weeks, then you'd probably look into descaling a lot more frequently than you know the person making five or ten coffees a day. Mm -hmm. um, um, Paul. Yep. I'm I'm very curious that. Um, what about the other brand of like traditional machines? Is that I don't think they have uh, something. I know I don't think they have descale function. No. So how do they? How do how do they like descale their commercial machine or some other home machines? Yeah. So it's a it's a really good question, and and mm. I think a lot of people uh, uh, don't realize the luxury of being able to descale at home. You know, we we mm. we. It's so convenient for us that the only real complaint is the time, it, the amount of time it takes. Uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. and the time, the majority of the time is flushing the, the water pathways. Um, but we've mm -hmm. also got to remember the benchmark that, you know, people like myself who have been around, you know, do boiler machines or uh, machines that you can't really do descaling yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Those machines really require a technician to dismantle uh, and essentially soak these uh, water tanks um, one side, then the other side. Um, oh, do you mean acid bath? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It literally is an acid bath. And oh, um, they're, they're using much more... Um, abrasive? Yes, abrasive and higher concentration okay. uh, acidic pHs um, to mm -hmm. get the job done. And, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, if you, you can look it up online, they're, they're very interesting photos and, you know, you see a, you see like a bath tank almost um, yeah. and they, they've got this solution in, they put the water tank in and then after one week they turn it over and the one, well, the, the half that has been submerged is obviously, you know, immaculately clean and then the other half, is, it looks like it's been in the sea for 50 years. Um, okay. And it really is shocking what what actually gets deposited inside a a, a boiler, and only when mm -hmm. you really see it um, do you realize that you know oh, this can really um, harm my machine. And mm -hmm. um, one of the big things about um, commercial machines, especially in commercial environments, is downtime. So mm -hmm. you know I've I've had experience where we were descaling a machine. Um, every, I think 
every six months we took a machine out we put the loaner machine in that was traveling around all the shops and then this machine would basically go off for a d scale and then come back when it was ready um, and, mm -hmm. and this would take how long does it take? Yeah, this how long does it take? Like a long days? time. <laughs> no, a long time because you know okay. it, uh, the cotton, the usage of the machine was so high. Um, I think a combination of also turning off the machines at night didn't really help with mm -hmm. the scale formation. I think it accelerated the scale formation. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 um, yeah, so you know the scale was bad. Even we though we had filtration and using Hong Kong water that was, uh, you know, already mm -hmm. quite uh, soft. Um, okay. Just the sheer usage of the of the machines caused um, masses of scale involved. Um, so we wouldn't see these machines for at least, you know, one and a half, two months. Um, it oh was almost God. a complete a overhaul. Months? Yeah, it was a complete overhaul. Oh. You know, the flow meters were gone. Um, the internal pipe, some of the pipeways had to be changed. And, um, you know, but these machines, you, you have to bear in mind, these machines were running nonstop um, for at least, you know, four or five hours before a calm period. And then we switched machines yeah. to let it calm down a little bit. So, so you know, what's what's the frequency like that? So busy that uh, that they serve like um, 400 cups a day, let's say, or 300 cups. We, uh, now what's the frequency of this scale once a year, twice a year? So they were once this every two years. The busy bars, they were probably having a load of 300, 400 cups per day per okay. machine. So two okay. machines in each 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 uh, each bar. So you know yeah. these these machines were 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 getting a good usage, and um, yeah, it only took one year, and then you know okay, it only took one year. But you know we just because of logistics and commercial you know cost. Um, we would push that down to about one and a half years before we would get it done. So, um, you know, you would notice a machine that came back, you know, and then your other machine would be on the tail end of its life. And you need to have that comparison with the same water was really interesting as well. Um, and mm -hmm. the main thing you see is, is clarity and balance of the acidity and, and sweetness. So it was, it was quite interesting to see how scale really affected your, your machine. But I think mm -hmm. the major thing that affected your machine was consistency in that um, it affected your flow meters um, in, inside the machine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. flow meters were used um, to calculate, you know, um, your volumetrics. Um, so yep. you could pre-program um, a shot to stop supposedly in, you know, one yep. ounce or maybe, you know, 40 mLs, depending on your recipe. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in yeah. reality, once once scale had set in and was affecting your flow meter, uh, <laughs> it, it started to become really inaccurate. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you would see shots that were 10 ml short or, you know, and the next shot would be 10 ml on, on top of that. So you'd have a 20 mm -hmm. ml range uh, on some really bad machines. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, new baristas that would obviously affect new baristas who were not aware of what was going on. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it was really baffling for some people and really enlightening for me um, because, uh, you know, coming to make coffee, you want consistency. And then you're really looking at your hardware to find that consistency and how can you, you know, maintain it to make sure you're giving out that quality shot after shot. Um, uh -huh. So, um, but that brings me to the DE1. And I was very... Um, Surprised to find that we we previously had a flow meter in the earlier models of our DE1, um, but mm -hmm. when I joined the uh, when I joined Decent, that was already removed from the platform, uh, and yep. flow was at that point uh, when I joined was calculated with the true data from uh, the pumps, the uh, how many uh, pumps the uh, the Vi pumps are pumping, um, so the true data meaning that they know. How much water is pumped with each pump cycle of the the vibratory pumps um, mm -hmm. and with true data you can calculate what is going on um, whereas previously our true data was coming from the the flow meter uh, and as we've discussed flow meter can become inaccurate or is not as accurate as the algorithm that we use now uh, mm -hmm. and that's the that's the beautiful story of it is that now that we found a more accurate way of calculating flow into the group head um, you know, we we also realize that flow is very important to have 
better accuracy with this flow, um, we now use the technology to help us uh, calculate it at, a, at, a, you know, at an accuracy that we've never really seen. And, and mm -hmm. that's just, you know, it's fascinating to see uh, from, from a machine. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I was very surprised at that. And, and my experience with flow meters clogging up and uh, I, I thought that was just amazing because, you know, all machines are still working off flow meters essentially. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's, that's a fascinating thing about it. And, do, you, do you mean that flow meters, do you, do you think that flow meters that you're talking about uh, that the machines with volumetrics um, function? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so okay. um, let me see if I can explain it. So uh, a flow meter, let's say this has a fan in the middle, okay? So a flow meter essentially okay. has a little, little fan, what looks like a fan, but mm -hmm. it essentially, if you have water coming through one end, however mm -hmm. many revolutions this fan sort of, or, or wheel, cogwheel sort of turns is how... Okay. However many uh, mLs per second you volume. say volume. Yeah, okay. So when you're programming um, volumetrics, um, you know you're you're, en you're essentially doing a manual shot, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know you go go into the programming menu. You've got a scale at the bottom, and you you know you're manually stopping the shot where you want the shot to stop. So it could be mm -hmm. one to one, 15, 16 grams. You want it to stop at sixteen mLs or sixteen grams on the okay. weight. Mm -hmm. So what happens inside the machine is they're they're not you know they're not counting the water they're just counting how many times this wheel rotates okay so okay. the time it takes for you to stop in, and the machine is calculating how many times this is rotated but in reality mm -hmm. what happens is that this wheel is not constant and sometimes we'll go mm -hmm. faster sometimes we'll go slower um, maybe mm -hmm. there is scale building up near the near the bearing. Uh, which causes mm -hmm. it to slow down at one one uh, certain points, um, and these are the factors that create the inaccuracies in in flow meters. Um, okay. And and yeah, it's it's very apparent when you make um, a lot of coffees with the same you know same coffee, same grinder, you know for a good long spell for at least an hour, mm -hmm. uh, and you can really see. Um, just by familiarity and repetition, um, you know, I could do, let, let's say, for example, you know, you have a cup. Uh, if you're pulling mm -hmm. shots, you know, for an hour and your cup is, you know, constantly going to the same level, but then one shot all of a sudden comes below a certain point, you're like, you know, maybe you're swelling the shots and the, the shot doesn't swell as high, you know, just mm -hmm. by eye, you can see that that shot is, 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 is not as much. Um, so mm -hmm. when you when you see these variables, you know you really question why why is that happening, and um, is there anything we can do in terms of operationally and, and maintenance or care mm -hmm. uh, to make that more consistent? Um, so you know for us it was taking it off to the technician to you know it's going on a holiday for a month and a half essentially it's yeah. going for a bath yeah, retired um or yeah. it's being retired um yeah and yeah so having that luxury to do it at home um and it's you know it's only going to take two hours at most if you've never really done it and that's being realistic mm -hmm. you know uh maybe mm -hmm. you're you know scrambling around to find things to go underneath or you know the water or you know you're unfamiliar so it's going to take you longer so the more you do it, the more familiar you're going to get, and the easier the process will be. So how's that water looking? Is there any debris in there? Um, just one piece of uh, debris in. Okay. That's all. It's getting better, yeah. Cool. So again, it's uh, slightly a little bit yellowish this time. Right. Yeah. So I'll dispose this. I'll show you again uh, how much is left. Okay. Again. So did that just finish, does it? Did that just finish, Dennis? Literally just finish? Yep. So that was yep. about nine minutes. Back to you. Okay. So okay. Um, it will take you around nine minutes per cycle. So let's say you do it per three cycle. times. Let's just call it t 10 minutes. So that's half an mm -hmm. hour. And then you probably spend about 15, 20 minutes clearing your water pathways. So as our prediction, you mm -hmm. know, 45 minutes is, bit. is probably yep. about there. And the water has gone mm -hmm. down a little bit, as Dennis is showing little there. Bit. Just a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. around 100 ml plus minus. Okay, put it back. 
So I think we're going to run it one more time, Dennis, and then we'll start with the yes. clearing of the pathways. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's try. Start it. Oh, um, getting sticky everywhere. You get a wet cloth to clean up. Yeah, the citric acid is getting sticky. You okay? Um, okay. Back at work. Um, oh, okay. That, that kind of reminds me of a story on uh, when I was really looking into, uh, when, well, when I began to look into water chemistry. And um, mm -hmm. we, I was uh, with a barista who, you know, he, he'd been around a few cafes and, and we were discussing the, the myth of whether to turn off your machine at night. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know whether you've heard about this, Dennis. Like, some people believe mm -hmm. that they should turn their machines off at night. And, and we're only referring to boiler, boiler machines here. Um, okay. Um, but some people believe that, you know, they should turn their boilers off at night. Uh, and the machines off at night to, you know, one, save electricity and to, uh, you know, it, it's safe to do so. Whereas the other mm -hmm. people, they believe that if they turn their machine off, um, you know, you're going to have um, your metals inside your machine contract. Uh, and this mm -hmm. will produce a certain level of stress on your machine as you turn on, it expands and as you cool, it contracts. So their theory okay. is that, you know, if if your machine is on all the time, you will not have that load, it's stress on your on your uh, pipes or on your metal weldings, uh, and okay. your machine will last longer. And okay. um, so this was a very interesting conversation because um, it, it brought to the point where I was asking about, oh, so I'm curious to know whether your first shot in the morning, do you feel like it tastes better uh, then, you know, then later on. And, um, so my theory is that in the water that has been in your tank overnight has time to leach out some minerals from your tank, mm -hmm. either it being calcium or something else and is causing, mm -hmm. um, your extraction due to the water chemistry being slightly different. So whether it's mm -hmm. extracting more or less, I think it will probably be more because it's higher TDS. Um, you get better mm -hmm. tasting shots in the morning than you do at night time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what started me off on the whole water chemistry thing, keeping on top of maintenance uh, and trying mm -hmm. to get a consistent flavor. Um, so I don't know if okay. you've ever experienced that, Dennis, like, you know, with boiler machines, um, you know, do you taste it different in the morning than you do halfway through the day? Um, I, my, my, through my experience, I don't think so, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I can't find any taste difference yeah. uh, in terms of, um, you know, um, at home or commercially. Right. So, but there's one thing that I realized that uh, when you talk about this, the rubber gasket, it seems to be the first shot is always the one that um, sometimes the first shot always leaks. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The first shot I was leaving. Yeah. yeah, so, so, but in terms of taste, no, I don't, I don't feel any taste difference. Okay. To be honest, yeah. But in terms of usage as well, overall, I would turn off the machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just to make sure the machine doesn't go haywire. Yeah, midnight, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So That's boiler could boil up or whatever things might happen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. without, you know. You yeah. know, my eyes looking at it. No, that's very true. Yeah, so, um, mm. um, if you if you are leaving your machine on, you're leaving your shop. Mm. The only thing that's stopping your machine from exploding is the safety valve. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, it, it it is more riskier, um, and I, I guess it's it's your own personal choice, really, um, how mm. much risk you mm. want to take. Um, I've only known of one also, machine blowing up. <laughs> I don't know how many machines you've 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 heard about or anything like that, Dennis. But I, I've, I've heard not of one heard machine. about it. But uh, uh, just to be safe, I just turn it off. Yeah, yeah. For safety's sake, yeah? yeah. So also that I have this experience, I forgot to turn off machine at home. Um, it's 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 not 
it, it's a water reservoir machine. It, it has water tank. Yeah. So it keeps boiling, boiling, sustaining the mm-hmm. temperature. And when I woke, when I wake up, and then I, I always take a look at the the water re- reservoir. Yeah. And one third of the water is missing. Ah, really? Yeah. So it evaporates yeah. off from the heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. So wow. it keep on, it keep on. It is not really a smart machine. It's just a very basic heat exchanger machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you turn on the machine, just you're giving instruction to sustain the heat, mm-hmm. the temperature, at all time. Right. So over the time that uh, I overnight leave it overnight, then I open up the tank. It's one third of the water is gone. Wow, that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, that, that's normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. But let's uh, let's ground this down and and bring this back to the DE one. Now we we're okay. discussing we're discussing about leaving on the machine, uh, and as mm-hmm. uh, most DE one users will know. Um, we have a auto cool down feature, which you know puts the machine into uh, idle mm-hmm. sleep, and you know yep. saves electricity, turning off the heaters, and only has you know Bluetooth connectivity and a- uh, power mm-hmm. to the USB. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, as we've discussed, you know, uh, should we turn it off or should we keep it on? Um, for the internals mm-hmm. on the D one. Um, most, you know, uh, you know, let's take, uh, our tubings and, and pack water pathways. Um, we do not weld into our machines. Um, we, we use the, um, um, clips in with O-rings, um, and the tubes are made out of, uh, PTFE. Um, it's completely fluid safe. Um, but what is beautiful about this, uh, material and the type of, um, tubing that we've we've picked for the decent is that because we do not weld we've cancelled out that stress load on you know when you heat your machine metal expands and when you cool metal contracts and we've cancelled out that stress uh, on those welding points um, so essentially the longevity of the machine um, in terms of you know um, how, how long it will last it will last years but also you know we've looked into you know the the weakest points of boiling machines which is their welds and um mm-hmm. i guess this is one of the design decisions that they um that they really put on um and it also you know the 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 material PT, ptfe is is a very good insulation of, of heat so you know mm-hmm. the water coming from the manifolds from the heaters they're not losing heat like a lot of the traditional commercial machines with the you know the pipes are made out of metal um, so mm-hmm. it's a lot more efficient, um, stabilizes the heat a lot better, and contributes to why you know the decent as well as its sensors um, can stabilize heat to the extreme that it does. Um, you mm-hmm. know, I, I often find it quite funny sometimes when you know people people look at the graph, and now that they have mm-hmm. this data in front of them, um, they they're very concerned about one and a half, maybe one degrees variance. And, mm. and I always try to put it into perspective with people in that when we set a machine, a temperature on a machine, on a boiler machine, for example, we set the boiler temp. Um, and that mm-hmm. boiler temp, by the time it gets to the group, by the time it gets to your coffee, may well have lost six degrees, maybe seven degrees mm. uh, by the time mm-hmm. you get there. So, you know, mm. um, just, just in terms of, you know, materials, efficiency, um, um, it was a great talking point to talk about, and um, yeah, I just found it very interesting when I when I really started looking at the internals and and you know just having that myth in the back of my head where you know nobody knows w- which way to go about it's it's almost personal mm-hmm. choice, you know we've taken that taken that out of the equation and you know now it has an auto off feature which is super convenient, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, so I think it's uh, really cool, um, cool. Yeah. to talk about, um, but. One of the things that um, for the piping, the tubing, is that it is a lot smaller than what you're used to. Um, mm-hmm. um, some people, the water pathway, do you mean? Yeah, the water pathway. Yeah, and yeah. Um, because it is of a, a, a small diameter, um, it mm-hmm. is you know it reinforces the point that we should keep on top of uh, things like scale and maintenance, um, because essentially it's like you know cholesterol in your bloodstream. Uh, once it gets blocked, yeah. you know it's 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 a big big deal, 
uh, and the functionality of your machine will be will be not as good and you know you'll be lucky to pull have a shot finish um, you know the very best it won't taste very good either so um, it's kind of good to, to keep on top of these things um, yeah so coffee, coffee is such a sophist, sophisticated yes. yeah so complicated and, <laughs> and yet so scientific <laughs> it's very true so, um, very so true. I have a lot of students that, oh, oh they are, so after listening to my explanation they got headache you know <laughs> <laughs> oh so complicated I can't get it <laughs> so many things just explaining the types of technology we have in the market on boiler machines in exchanger single yes. boiler yes. Oh, they, yet they got so complicated yes <laughs> they're so frustrated and <laughs> so funny <laughs> <laughs> alright yeah. Um, the process almost done. Um, it's almost done right now. I think one or two minutes should excellent, be done. Excellent. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's dripping out the steam one right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after this, uh, what shall we do? Uh, uh, we, we, we'll work on to clean the pathways. So we will we'll start flushing. First. We will start steaming into a jug uh, and uh, back flushing as well. So. Um, and we'll keep doing that until we don't smell any uh, vinegar citric acid, okay? And then okay. once we don't start smelling it, uh, we will just mm -hmm. start, you know, tasting it a little bit to see if it, it it's still in there, okay? Okay, all right. Check <laughs> it out. So, <laughs> Xavier says, yeah, I have a headache and I've only just joined. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, I'm so glad that I learned coffee during the time there's so, not so much of technology. I know, not so right? much gadget. <laughs> yeah. Much more uh, purity, I would say. <laughs> Less pollution. <laughs> yeah. We, we just sell highly engineered water, you know? <laughs> <laughs> extracting extracting solubles at a, you know 18 20 23 <laughs> percent in highly engineered water you know, when, when i start when i started working at a bar there was it was a time that there's no coffee scale yeah it, it yeah. wasn't popular yeah it wasn't yeah. popular just we just count by second uh -huh. just look at the flow a blonde yeah. or no blonde and that's it yeah <laughs> and when the scales comes in when the decimal point scale comes in, that's all start, you know, <laughs> uh, complicated. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All yeah. right. It's, uh, uh, okay. it's a lot easier these so, days, isn't it, Dennis? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So right now, those people who hop in into the, you know, the wagon right now, they got headache and they got so frustrated. You know, <laughs> uh, I joined that time of uh, Latia. It wasn't popular. And right now, it, it feels so stressful right now to be a barista. You know, so many expectations. Yeah. yeah. We have, we have the, the home barista culture is so hot right now, mm -hmm. so trendy. Mm -hmm. And even if you serve the public, it feels so, so stressed because you do not know, you do not know yeah. who's who. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. when I served coffee at that time, eight years ago, nine years ago, you know, everyone just, oh, this nice coffee, this good coffee. That's it. Yeah. Nobody come and ask me whatever country, how was your recipe, what's your brew ratio, stuff like that, you know. Okay, so it's done right now. Um, take this out, hold on. Okay, All right. So, um, take this out. Let me show you how much is left. Mm. Again, I need to put down my phone. But um, while while you're doing this, Dennis, I'll just say it's something. Like, yep. Um, uh, it's 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 quite true. There is quite a lot to take in, um, mm -hmm. but we have to remember that the decent machine is you know it's it's like a how can I do an analogy? It's it's like a grand touring car, right? You know, it's it's not your yeah. bog standard average car where you take it for an MOT. It's, you know, it it has some performance behind it, and you mm -hmm. know to maintain that performance. Um, we have to do certain things. Um, you know, a good example would be the blind flush and the cleaning process. You know, we have mm -hmm. to do both uh, in combination together to make sure we cover all areas. And you know, if if this was a bog standard machine, you know, we wouldn't have to do that. Uh, and that yep. just uh, you know helps to answer some questions that some people may feel like, oh, I don't need to do that because I never did that before. 
Um, mm -hmm. And this is just a, you know, this video is just trying to reinforce that, you know, the, the D1 is, is very innovative and some things inside the machine um, yep. need special attention, uh, much like, you know, a, 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 a you know, a grand touring car where some some parts of the car are more specialized, um, so mm -hmm. may need you know extra attention from a technician or, in this case, by ourselves the users to to make sure it's performing. Um, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Yep, there's uh, okay done. There's no debris at all. Mm. Um, clarity. Mm -hmm. yep. Does it does it smell at all? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, most so of the same, um, Brian. So I'm just answering Brian's question. Brian's asking if there are any okay. specific type of citric acid. Um, citric acid is food safe, so that's why you find it in baking stores and and all that. It's essentially the same thing. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, you may you'll find that you know, certain kettle ones that sell citric acid, they'll, they're, they're in little 30 gram packs or something, and it's a lot more expensive to buy. Um, so if you are going to buy it, buy it in bulk in bigger bags and like the bakery stores or maybe find it online. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, so should I exit right now or you want to change? So we've um, cleaned the citric acid out of the tank and refill yep. it with fresh water. Okay, I'll get it done right now. Yeah. I need both hands right now. That's okay. Give me a minute. So now we've finished with the descaling uh, function with the citric acid. Um, so mm -hmm. we're, we're just getting Dennis just to swap out the citric acid, give it a bit of a rinse, uh, and then refill yep. it with fresh water. And so this fresh water is used to help clear the pathways. Um, but as mentioned earlier on in the Zoom, um, some of this fresh water um, that has been sucked up um, will be uh, put back in uh, via the return water uh, outlet, which is towards the front left of the machine behind the, 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 the forward flush valve. And um, now this return water will have some um, citric acid inside. So once the descale uh, function finishes, we will re-swap the water in the water tank uh, with fresh water again um, just to make sure we're not uh, reintegrating that diluted citric acid that is now in the water tank. Okay. All right. Um, oh, are you going to give me a minute? I, just, I have to go to the kitchen and that's okay. uh, do some that's okay. first. I can carry on oh, talking okay. for a little bit. So All that's right. cool. Take your time. And um, so, so essentially, we're, we're making sure that we're having fresh water every time we um, are starting the descale uh, function after we have used the citric acid solution. Um, we're, we're making sure we're having fresh water here. Um, so we're maximizing the, the cleaning of the water pathways. Um, obviously, the 100, meter, 100 milliliters that has been sucked up during each cycle um, there will be a little bit left over inside and um, so we're just making sure that this is being cleaned with as fresh as water as possible. So after the two purges with fresh water in the water inlet lines, um, we will start to flush just by uh, the GHC button uh, into a container and also we will do the hot water spout as well and then finally we will also do the steam wand. And after each um, purge, steam, or uh, hot water, um, we will also smell to see if there's any residual uh, aromas of citric acid. Um, and when we can't smell it, we will um, uh, uh, taste it as well. Um, as I mentioned as well, that the aroma will disappear first, so you won't be smelling the citric acid, uh, but you very well may taste it still in the, in the water coming out. So um, it's good to check that point. Um, so if you're still tasting the citric acid um, after each purge through the uh, flush, steam, or hot water spout, then um, the advice is to redo the uh, process of the purge, steam, water spout until you can't taste it. Okay. And um, let's say if you haven't done it all properly and there is still some citric acid in your um, water pathways, uh, your coffee will be affected in terms of its taste and that 
it will be noticeably more sharp. Obviously, you have more citric acid in there, uh, which will in turn lower the pH of your uh, coffee. Um, but also, you uh, will lack the sweetness because the acidity has shot up. Um, in terms of will it harm anything inside your machine, um, as we mentioned, no, it won't. We've had uh, or we've sourced a lot of the testings on the components. Uh, the components, materials that it's made from, um, hence why we recommend citric acid only. And um, yeah, so we've just about covered all the aspects there. Um, I will actually say um, I read a post by Shin um, over the weekend and um, it wasn't really related to the descale process. Um, but what uh, was really interesting was that he he was, I think the title was Not Wasting Water or um, Trying to Minimize the Waste of Good Water or something like that. Um, I'll, I'll post it in with the, uh, the Zoom link coming up. But um, essentially what he did was he had two bowls underneath his machine, uh, one for the water inlet pipe and one to catch the return valve. And um, the, th the whole topic of the thread was he didn't want to waste water and if he only made one or two cups in the morning, uh, one bowl full of pure water would be in more than enough uh, to see you through those shots. And um, the argument that he was stressing was that he didn't want water to be left in his tank if he was only making one or two shots. Um, I think he probably found he was having his whole tank sat in there for the whole week and he wasn't really changing or changing it. Um, not that it would do any harm to him, um, because I think he keeps his machine very clean, um, but I think it was very good in aspects of him saving water. But where it's interesting is that if you wanted to really speed and up this process, instead of taking out the water tank all the time, you could have uh, one bowl underneath uh, the water inlet and one bowl underneath to catch the, the, the return water and just change this water here with fresh water. Um, and you'll find that you know not taking out the water uh, the water tank and just having these bowls to to speed and up that process may save you five to maybe ten minutes. Um, but yeah, so it's it's kind of depending on how familiar you are and if you can get a bowl that is will be tall enough or have enough clearance underneath the machine. Okay, I'm back. Um, hey, you back? Okay. Yep. So I was just letting Go everyone ahead. know about a, a little hack in, mm -hmm. um, uh, in without having to take the water tank to change fresh water, just having a bowl okay. underneath with fresh water and then another bowl mm -hmm. to catch the, the return water. Uh, and mm -hmm. then you can take this bowl and slide it out from the back rather than from the front all the time and just change this. And you'll find that a whole bowl mm -hmm. of this will be enough for the whole cycle. So, um, so you can quicken up the process a little bit, but not by too much. Okay, so should I do a auto cleaning function right now? Uh, yeah. So another um, auto cleaning. So you mean descale? Okay. Uh, descale right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Which so while you were away, I just explained um, the whole process that we're doing, and mm -hmm. um, uh, what checks we will do with the water. Um, yeah, to okay. make sure we have flushed out all the citric acid solution from the water pathways. And mm -hmm. um, Brian has mentioned in the comments, um, because I was saying if you had citric acid still in your machine, how would it affect your coffee? And he's saying, will it make my Guatemala and taste like a Kenyan? Um, oh. In terms of acidity, most likely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, those that may not be so familiar with Kenyan origin, if you make it as espresso, as a, uh, as a Kenyan espresso single origin, it's super high in terms of acidity and is a little bit mm. too much for most people. So uh, that's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Some people really like that acidity, though. That's it's a little bit too much for me, even for me. Um, for espresso itself, um, me, I'm, I'm on your side. So yeah. I, I can't, I can't take espresso with Kenya. I can't even finish it. Just <laughs> like one to two, I can't finish it. 
<laughs> so I have to mix with a little bit of water, like long black. Uh, yeah. I'm fine with milk. I'm fine with long black. But uh, yeah, but let's say it's pour over. Yes, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, espresso um, itself is too intense for me, yeah. I I would rarely even go to the Americana route. I would probably more directly go for a pour over myself, um, mm -hmm. unless like uh, I I don't like um, florally green. You know how sometimes Kenyan tastes a bit tomatoey and a bit green. I don't I don't really like uh, that as green an espresso. Mango. Huh? Yeah, I taste really heavy green mango. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that yeah, green, green floral mango, mango tomato. Yeah. Uh, cascara yeah. sort of taste. I, I, I'm not so keen. I kind of like it. You, you like I it? I like it, but that's but cool. Not, but not espresso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not espresso. <laughs> some water, some dilution, yeah. But some people like it, so you know, each yeah. to their own. Each to their own. Yeah, some people. Yeah, some people like lemon juice. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I like grapefruit with acidity, though. I quite like that. I like it when it yeah. tastes like grapefruit, yeah. Bittersweet? Yeah, bitter bittersweet. Sweet. Yeah. 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 I, I really like mm. that. What, what, kind of, what kind of beans are you talking? Like grapefruit? Um, grapefruit Central notes. Americans, they've got they're quite, quite high acidity. A lot of those have uh, grapefruit flavors. Mm -hmm. El Salvador? Uh, Salvador, yeah. I like El Salvador. They have a lot of uh, tropical fruits. Quite rare. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's quite yeah. rare over here. It's quite uh, rare, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I remember just you know buying all lots of different origins and tasting all different waters and things like that. It's, it was a proper journey. Proper journey. Oh, interesting. It must be very interesting, yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, right. I, I think it was quite. Um, lucky in you know people were just as keen as me and and were sourcing their own beans so you know it wasn't just myself bringing beans to the table and and yeah. and you know trying to people's different tastes you know obviously I, they would buy things that I would never buy um, mm -hmm. and and you know you really sort of found what you really liked and yeah some of the things mm -hmm. that I would never buy but have tried it it's 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 worth trying but I would never buy again um but you'd never know that unless you tried it so um mm -hmm. that's what I found fascinating about it uh and even when roasters had the same bean um roasting it in you know a different country on a different roaster that was very interesting as well um mm -hmm. and that uh yellow and red bourbon period you know yellow red and orange mm -hmm. bourbon from the same farm, yeah. uh, that blew mm. my mind. How how the different varietals tasted. That was really mm. cool. Do, do you mean in which brew method, espresso, or do you mean um, pour over? At that point, it was pure pour overs because they were roasted quite pour light. Over, yeah. Um, mm. But um, yeah, I, you know, from finding, I thought there was only red red cherries, but then finding there were orange and and yellow. Uh, that blew my mind, and, and I was I was really pursuing flavor and trying to find out what do those taste like and things like that. And uh -huh. uh, yeah. yeah, so decent's kind of ignited that fire in you know you can unlock these flavors now, and and, and that's what uh -huh. I find fascinating. Um, uh, you know, the different types of you know the varietals, of, you know, just the colors. Um, you know, yellow bourbon I found was very acidic and, and sharper. Um, uh, compared to you know, let's say the Red Bull Bond. Um, mm. Red Bull Bond was a lot sweeter, more fuller, uh, and seemed more complex. It was oh. kind of strange. Um, just okay. things like that. So, oh. uh, you mean more boozy or whiny? Um, no. If it was uh, with the natural processes, yeah, you would find uh, the Red Bull Bonds were more boozy. Um, yeah. The yellow seemed to be more cleaner, um, and uh, I didn't have too much of the orange to really tell the difference. Only had uh, a few of that because it was all from the same mm -hmm. farm, all from the same roaster. So it was mm -hmm. very rare to have that comparison. You know, the same farmer mm -hmm. growing it, um, and and you know the same yeah. processing and the same uh, roaster. So to to find uh, a comparison side by side like that was fascinating, um, and. Yeah, I'm just kind of remembering all these things that, you know, when you go through flavor and, and find out what you like and 
it just reminded me of these stories and, and you know these cool little things that I just remember very specifically um, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but now it's now it's all <laughs> decent related and it's like oh I can change this and this and this <laughs> yeah yeah right, let's come back over here it's almost done cool uh, just yep um yeah so the whole the whole steam one is very sticky right now mm -hmm. i need to clean a little bit it's very sticky yeah because of citric acid yeah 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 it'll be the citric acid mm -hmm. and um it's just you know whatever it's leaching out um it's it's you know sticking back onto the steam wand as it's uh, coming back to a liquid um mm -hmm. let me yeah. see if i can grab a cloth to clean up a little bit Mm -hmm. The whole thing is sticky right now. Yeah, give me ten seconds. Sure, sure. But um, I think I touched upon um, talking about the uh, internals of the decent and how over time when using it um i think i referred to the the one of the the staff um du ones in the factory um it it doesn't uh gets you know maintained as well as it should and um me following taste so much um i found that even though the machine and i knew the machine was not as clean as it should be um the taste uh, wasn't as affected as much and um, I'm really believing that the uh, the forward flush valve separating the dirty water being flushed out into the drip tray um, has much more of a significant effect than a lot of people realize. And um, what it boils down to is it just stays cleaner for longer. And, you know, you've not got those rancid coffee oils um, affecting your brew water. Uh, and therefore affecting your final quality of your cup. So um, yeah, it's 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 great to see a design that is uh, helping with you know uh, maintenance in terms of you know it does take time and you do have to do it, uh, but it just comes with the territory, right? Um, you're not going to cook the same meal in the same pan uh, after you've made a shot or after you've you know done a session on it. So. Um, so I can kind of see the it's, the process is still going on a little bit, Dennis. Yeah, yep. It's still yeah, it's still dripping on and off right now. But the water doesn't look as uh, thick, right? So it looks more like water no, now. No, no. Yeah, it looks like more water right now. It's but it's still sticky a little bit, just yeah. a little bit sticky right now. The water okay. itself. Yeah, previous uh, the previous solution. Yeah. Yeah. Everything looks good right now. Hmm. Okay. So, you have any experience of? Uh, is there or is there anyone in Hong Kong that is serving coffee just by decent espresso machine like D1? Uh, is yeah. There there's any? um. There is uh that pop up cart that um John uh recently posted about, and yeah. um. I believe she was. Uh, she used to be an air hostess, and she, you know, was roasting coffee on the side. And uh, I'm not sure if she had a decent already, or she purchased the decent to run her business. Um, wow. But um, I, uh, John's, I think, visited her once or twice, and, and and was generally impressed with what she was doing. Obviously, roasting is not mm -hmm. easy, and and for her to be roasting herself, sourcing the beans, and and roasting it to a level that uh, impressed John was is phenomenal. And mm -hmm. um, I believe she's she's going around three different locations and she's had a, a, a really good support. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I think she's she's been uh, using all her coffee each time, like she's roasting just enough uh, for her usage. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, she's been quite successful. Um, mm -hmm. I know of uh, another um, user who recently bought the double XL um, upgraded from uh, pro um, actually used mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, money back so she traded her machine back in and got money off mm -hmm. towards her new machine and uh, mm -hmm. she runs a small little um, cart on, uh, on one of the piers in Hong Kong I think it's in okay. Kowloon Bay 
and um, mm -hmm. yeah, she does very well. A lot of uh, regular customers. Um, she does better on sunny days than obviously rainy days because she's outside. Uh, but yeah. yeah, she 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 goes strong, and um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think it's um, people are realizing that they can use it in 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 more commercial environments. Um, mm -hmm. I think these cup numbers uh, aren't sort of uh, off the charts. Uh, it's very manageable with one unit. Um, but mm -hmm. um, I have been receiving a few more um, inquiries in terms of uh, what we would recommend in terms of setup for commercial environments. Um, mm -hmm. I have been sort of saying, uh, you know, in time with cleaning and maintenance, um, if their cup numbers are over a certain amount um, or they mm -hmm. have rushes um, to really consider buying a, a secondary unit, not just for workflow and efficiency, but also in the cases where you may need to descale or, you know, touch wood if something ever happens, mm -hmm. uh, you still got one machine to, to work from. Um, but yeah, I think a lot more people um, are considering it mainly from a consistency point of view and the quality of the drinks that come out. Um, mm -hmm. I personally believe that the more um, people explore the commercial route, the more that they will find that it will become a cost saving to them as well, not because of mm -hmm. the base unit price, um, but because of the, the wastage that will be involved in producing, uh, you know, especially in specialty around um, the consistency that a lot of the users, uh, well, consumers now are used to. Um, um, I, I used to train people in an environment where it'd be like, you know, if it's not right, we don't send it out. You've got to throw it out. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we give them ranges, shot ranges, um, and if it wasn't within the range, then it get chucked out. So, um, you know, just from a commercial point of view, you're potentially going to save a lot more beans, um, the quality of your drinks will be better. Um, you know, you'll find your grind quicker at the end of the day. <laughs> so you know, you can yeah. really see the the logic behind. You know, you'll be saving your major cost, which is coffee <coughs> beans. Um, yeah. And you know that that relates to other things: workflow, less remakes. Um, your baristas will be less stressed, so your quality of service will go up. Um, mm. Just things like that, and I think it it'll be a natural domino effect. Um, but I really feel that the potential of it is is still a little bit untapped at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I think you know videos like this showing people how to maintain it, how to look after it, will go a long way in reassuring them that you know uh, we're not just going to sell you a machine. We'll also look after you and make sure you're you're getting good coffee out of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So now, well, on on my point of view. Uh, I've been using this lovely machine over here for to serve for the past eight weeks mm -hmm. or so, plus minus, um, around probably 30 cups, 40, the max was mm -hmm. like 60 cups a day. Uh, I really love the decent scale. Yep. Yeah, I really love that because I can just use the scale itself. Let me show you. I just use. I don't use the battery because the battery oh. just lasts me a day. Wow! <laughs> so you use the you use the so, wire all the time. Yeah, I, I connect to the USB all the time. Wow! Cool. And, Good on you. Uh, I just leave it there. The best thing about this, with the scale, I just leave my paper cup or my ceramic cup on top. I just press start. It will stop at the right weight. So in the meantime, I can just go rush off to prep my other stuff. For example, prep, pour up the milk, uh, prep my ice milk, ice cubes into the milk or whatever. So uh, when I'm back, for sure, it's the stop at weight. Yeah. At the desired weight. That's what I really love about this. Yes. Yeah. So I, I had, I, ha I have a Kaya scale. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that it troubles me that I have the on off, on off. Uh, <laughs> interval of charge yes. just to save some battery. Yeah, yeah. Just to not charge it so frequently. So, but then the bad thing about that is I on it, off it. When I off it, then I have to make sure it's paired. 
again when I turn it on. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it might just not pair, sometimes it might pair. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I love the skill of this one. Yeah. Just pair once, just stay on for the rest of the day. <laughs> That's All good right. to hear okay. you. Uh, um, yep. So is the, the, the process uh, finished again? Excellent. Finished, yes. Okay. Shall I do it one time? Or yeah. we, you can either do one more time or go directly in to start flushing the system. It's up to you. Okay. Up to you. Um, do you mean all the clean function? Uh, no. I mean, um, no. just by flushes, pressing the hot water spout, and also um, purging your okay. steam one. So just by the GHC controls now. Mm-hmm. All right. Just flush it out. Like that? Mm-hmm. Let me smell it. Yeah, it's sourish. Sourish. Now, yeah, bear in mind that the tank uh, you have uh, in uh, uh, with the water already still has a little mm-hmm. bit of citric acid from the oh. return water. Okay, so if you really okay. wanted to speed in this process up, um, you would mm-hmm. also change that water. But um, you know, it's it's only a very small amount, but it will make a difference. So. You know, if you wanted to speed it up, you can also change the water again into fresh water. Uh, but, you know, you will be running more than that tank's uh, full of water anyway. So you may as well mm-hmm. just flush it out and, and, and hope, hope for the best in terms of, you know, uh, getting it all out. Uh, but in terms okay. of, you know, if you're not pressured by time, you know, you can just do it like this way. Mm-hmm. Like that. I turn off my catering kit, by the way. My refill kit is just turned off. Mm-hmm. So I'm just using the water tank right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll just, just flush out until. And um, also do the hot water spout as well, because um, that pathway is okay. also clean. Hot water spout. Yeah. yeah. So let me check. Okay. How come yours looks more powerful than mine? <laughs> <laughs> I rarely use this, to be honest. I rarely use this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have though. a kettle over here. I have a kettle over here to stand by for that, so it's faster. <laughs> okay, flush out. No more sour smell. Yeah, no more smell right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Shall I empty the tank? Uh, yeah. Shall I also do a little tank? bit of the steam wand as well, um, okay. because it will have the the yeah a little bit still in so. Mm-hmm. Can you smell it right now from yep. the steam? No, no, no smell. It's good sign. No smell at all. Good yeah. sign. Good sign, yeah. I'm not sure about taste. <laughs> Probably still taste it. <laughs> <laughs> not sure about taste. There's no smell right now. So, does anyone else use your machine, Dennis? Is, 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 does, does uh, it... Yeah, my students. Yeah. So they'll they'll yeah. go. Oh, the coffee is tasting sharper too. <laughs> we'll know why. <laughs> yeah. uh, tomorrow will be me. I, I think tomorrow will be just me. So I'll just give it a try tomorrow. Sure. Make sure clear all the water part. And then then clear off the steam one. Just to be sure. Yeah, most of it uh, will be will come out of the uh, flush and the steam. Um, the hot water spout, um, you only really need to do a few times. Um, <clears throat> and that's simply because the, um, the steam uh, pathway also goes across the hot water spout pathway in the manifold. Mm-hmm. All right, that's some of it. Oh, I'm surprised that it still has water in it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, flush out. Okay. 
So I think um, because you can't smell it right now, Dennis, maybe a yeah, good idea yeah, to change the water in your uh, water tank okay. to fresh. Mm. And then um, we can start seeing if we can taste the um, um, citric acid. Ideas. So you will be able to taste it now because there's some citric acid in the water tank still. But it will give you a good reference point. You don't have to drink it, but you just taste oh. it. Right? Yeah, so it's quite strong, right? <laughs> Oh, it's very really strong. Yeah. Oh my god. So, um, <laughs> so now will be a good time because you can't smell it to change out the water again. Okay. okay. And uh, also, it'd be a good time um, if you wanted to try out the transport mode, but you don't have to. Um, transport mode will okay. quicken the process a little bit more, um, but mm -hmm. you you know you might say one or two flushes or cycles after that. So it's up to you. If you want to try the transport mode just to drain out everything, you can. If not, just continue mm -hmm. with the fresh water and maybe have to uh, flush or purge your steam wand a little bit longer. So it's up to you. Okay, let me just change the fresh water right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, hold on. I'll be back. Yeah, sure. So um, introducing the transport mode. Um, so what does transport mode do? It just clears your water pathways, including your pumps. Um, of water and uh, as mentioned before it's just for a safety feature if you're traveling with your DU1 and um, if anything does come loose um, it's just to make sure that nothing it will get damaged even if anything gets loose um, so it some users have used this feature um, to quicken up this process and as Dennis has found out even though he can't smell the citric acid coming out uh, from the water the taste will be very strong and um, I only know by experience and you will find that you know you only need to like put your finger in it and just lick your finger and you will it's like licking a, a lemon okay it is still that concentrated so um, if you empty out your water pathways you're giving yourself a little bit more of a head start in getting that you know uh, uh, citric acid residue out of your D1 and then replacing it with fresh water as opposed to just using fresh water uh, you're diluting it diluting it diluting it uh, before you get to the same point as in using transport mode so um, it will save you a little bit more time um, but in terms of uh, what you need to do to get there it's almost the same. So, you know, you could just leave your steam one, uh, you know, on for a little bit longer as opposed to, you know, going through transport mode, draining your system and then re-implementing your water tank. Um, it's about the same. Um, but um, some people prefer it. Um, some people have gone one step further in, in you know, using two points. Um, go back to the point when I was talking about Shin using two bowls. Um, you know, they use that technique to recapture the water so it doesn't reintegrate into the tank. So, you know, reinforcing that, you know, you're using proper fresh water to flush out uh, and diluting it to its maximum rather than diluting it with a little bit of citric acid in there. Okay. So we've got fresh water, Flushing right? Out. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Okay. I predict you probably have to do this one more time, Dennis. <laughs> okay, with fresh water? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Yeah, just so long there's no more, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, while no you were away, I just um, introduced the hack of um, um, D running the D scale, um, but without mm -hmm. the water tank, okay? Um, so essentially you'd have uh, fresh water in one bowl um, going to the water intake pipe. And then you will have another separate bowl uh, ready to catch the return water from the DE1 machine. Um, as you already know, the return water will have some citric acid inside it because it's still in the machine. And what this means is that you are constantly refreshing your machine with fresh water rather than diluted citric acid water, which is what we did last time. Okay. So... Uh, we're not using the descale function right now. We're just using the GHC controls to flush hot water and uh, steam. Uh, so there isn't any uh, return water going back into the water tank. 
So at the moment, we are refreshing the water pathways with fresh water and not diluted citric acid. Okay. Okay. Flash. Flash. Yeah. Right. So, taste. so was um was was your tasting before like a like a you know licking a lemon? Yeah, <laughs> lemonade without sugar. Yeah, with no sugar. Lemonade without sugar. Yeah, with no sugar. <laughs> Okay. Getting better? Up. Oh. Better? It tastes like water right now. Yay! Yep. <laughs> I guess it's done. It tastes like water right now. So, um, one more try just to be safe. Just, yeah, just go one more time with flush, hot water, and steam, and then uh, I think you're pretty much ready there. Okay? Yeah. So, the taste test is the one to uh, confirm whether you flushed all your things out. So um, this could take longer, it could take shorter, but it's just depending on how much uh, citric acid is left inside, okay? And um, so once that is done, that is essentially um, descale with citric acid at the proper solution. Um, we've gone through why. Obviously, you don't want your D1 to have a hemorrhage uh, with cholesterol, i.e. scale, in your water pathways. And mm -hmm. we advise you to uh, do this once or twice a year. If you're using a lot of coffee or your water is slightly harder than we recommend, then you perhaps may need to do it more often. Uh, but please, please, please don't leave it until you have a problem. <laughs> um, do it's it good. at least once a year, okay? And even if you're not doing it once a year, you wait until the next year, it's going to take you twice as long because, as we've mentioned, it's better to run the whole tank of solution if you've not done it for a long time. Uh, but if you've done it once a year, then just run it three, four times, flush your pathways, and you're all set. Okay? So, um, so my advice on uh, descaling is quite easy, Dennis. It's quite easy, right? Yeah, it's, quite, it's very yeah? easy. So, so yeah. the only thing so, is just the time. I think yeah. This is one of the reasons we don't use chemical. Yeah. Yeah. That's right not as sure well. Not sure if I can, you know. Yeah. And um, not sure if I can take a second sip with chemical. <laughs> <laughs> That's very yeah, true. Just, That's very true. Joking. <laughs> so, um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed um, our topic this week. Um, if you do have any questions, make sure you type quickly right now because we are coming to the end, and um, mm -hmm. you know. Always great to have you on, Dennis. Um, I find we, we've got a good Pleasure. little click right now, and I feel we cover a lot of cool topics uh, and cover them well. Um, you know, one person doing it and the other person commenting and vice versa. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll look to do something else in the future, Dennis. Um, of course, of course. Um, I'm actually thinking yeah. of doing something on milk, uh, milk drinks, and doing something along drinks and I'm thinking of doing something like uh, milk ratios and how the, the drink comes what is a cortado things like that mm -hmm. okay um, mm -hmm. so we give people maybe a few uh, recipes on how things are made in terms of ratios maybe ratio of milk to foam um, something like that so we'll have a discussion on recipes styles of recipes and maybe we'll get into the style of shots um and I don't know, so we'll have a how, chat about it, Dennis. How, yeah? how about we go deep dive into the milk steaming? Ooh, yeah. Um, we could do that too. Dairy, non dairy, Ooh. how do I hold pitcher? Okay. Uh, yeah. what kind of temperature? Uh, yeah. what's the spec? Hundred seventy Celsius or uh, one point seven mil per second? Yeah. yeah which yeah, works yeah. best for you. Okay. Yeah, we could do could, that. Could we yeah. tie something like um, the the flow rate as well? How we can change it? How it changes your milk? The flow yeah. rate? Changing the flow rate? Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. I, I I love <laughs> I love to use the change of flow rate real time. Yeah, me too. I love to spin my milk. I love to spin my milk at 1.5 mil mm -hmm. and then turn it all to the lowest 0 0.4 mil. Yeah. yeah. I get the perfect perfect uh... texture. Driest, driest. 
Yeah. Nice, nice. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. So we'll yeah. have a we'll have it's another talk this that. week. Um, I don't know how busy you are next week. It doesn't have to be next week. Um, if you want to take a break, you can take a break, and I'll, I'll do something else. But I'll, I'll catch up with you at some point this week. Um, we'll have a mm-hmm. discussion over it. Um, okay. I'm just going to respond to Mike's question here. He's talking about the um, the recipe for the citric acid. Does seem like quite a lot. Um, mm. But the whole reason for that is to make sure we have a high enough concentration of citric acid to fully dissolve the any scale that is formed inside your machine. Um, what we are slightly concerned about is that if it's not strong enough, um, will it just cleave off the bit of scale and not fully dissolve and therefore have mm. a potential to block somewhere else? Um, so we mm-hmm. want to cancel out that. Um, we know that it's not going to be detrimental to the components in our machine. So we suggest that very high concentration to make sure we dissolve all the bits of calcium and it comes out as a liquid. Uh, and you can kind of see from the, 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 the zoom that, you know, there was no white bits coming out. Uh, what was coming mm-hmm. out was, you know, bits of black charred. Uh, maybe... Uh, milk? Yeah. Uh, Probably milk, yeah. Maybe, most likely was milk. And mm-hmm. um, and that's reassuring, um, and you kind of know that it's doing its job. Um, you will notice the thickness of the water coming out that we did mention is quite thick and and viscous, um, and 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 that's just due to the concentration of the, the solution. But um, due to the narrow path flows, yes, yes, that is very true. Um, so we did also discuss about how thin the uh, the uh, PTFE tubes are. And um, we just want to ensure that they're, we're, we're, we're keeping on top of it to make sure that they're not blocked. Um, and we, I think we put that in because some people were saying, oh, I've never had a problem before. Um, why do I need to do it now? Uh, so it goes into how we've designed it to, you know, the components and the size of tubing that we, we can actually get away with. Um, but, yeah, so cool. So, um I guess if there's nothing else, we'll leave it there, Dennis. Brian, yep. Brian left a question that, uh, is there a, any way that we can have a look back at our B-scale lock that, uh, you know, when was the last time that uh, we Ooh. used the B-scale? Is um, there any in the app? I don't think so in the app. Um, I, I believe so, yeah. we can do it at the factory where we get the, uh, the system log. Um, yeah. if I think people this are is a very similar question. That, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, Paul. This is a very similar question that I, I gave it to you mm-hmm. last week. We were talking about is there any notification reminder that after 200 shots, I'm supposed to do deep cleaning on the group elements? The second of all, um, is there any schedule for this skill that I can look back when did I this scale? Yeah, yeah. So the only real guideline that we have on the app is is the shot counter at the moment. Um, yeah. So I, I I make people aware of the shot counter. Um, I don't necessarily make them aware for the reason, but I just like the to let them know um, that the the data is there. Um, and mm-hmm. gen- more more often than not, when they hear about uh, you know are you running three to five shots a day. They generally will do their own maths and, and calculate, you know, are they getting close to 200 shots? Um, do they need to clean? So um, um, it's a very good question. Um, I believe we should implement it. Uh, we have a Descale Now message pop up um, mm-hmm. that does come up when, um, you know, data from the graph uh, seems a little bit not as normal. It will give you a pop up message saying you should Descale Now. And um, I think we should do more of that in terms of, you know, maybe we should have one that comes up with, oh, you're coming, you've used so many shots, um, you should think about yeah. scheduling a descale. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the thing that it clocks up when it shows that, that means it clocks up, something happens. Right? Mm, so if, yes. let's say, we can have a schedule, preventive schedule, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think it would be, um, it's definitely a good idea, and I think it's, it wouldn't be hard for us to implement. Um, mm-hmm. And um, But where it gets complicated is that we could give a guideline, but some of the factors involved are, you know, how hard is your water? Not everyone is using the same hardness of water. 
So yeah. for us to introduce it, I think it would be more often than you would need it um, mm -hmm. because, you know, we want to you know, include those people that may have harder water uh, and make sure we catch them um, mm -hmm. um, because all, all it will take is two weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So if we can catch them within the two weeks and make them aware of, you know, water going in the machine, the kettle analogy, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 it's it's. Yeah, we, we can only say so much, but it's it, it, a lot of it is to do with the user and scheduling it in, um, and that's what I find it is. It's not a it's difficult. Um, you can always find the information or ask us, um, but what is difficult for a lot of home users is scheduling in uh, that clean and realizing the importance of it. Um, like people like you and me, for example, we we're just it's ingrained into us, right? Like we, we've got to clean it. Uh, we know why, mm. uh, but for the user, they they may not put the importance on it, and um, mm. and, th and that's what these are about. Um, so for Descale, the 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 big moment is that you can do it yourself rather than sending it away and having your machine out of action for two weeks and you got no coffee for two weeks. So um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I think we could definitely do more on that front and letting people be aware. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. cool. That'll all be right, all nice. today. All right. Always a good one. A pleasure a pleasure to have you with you. Yeah. Uh, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hope you guys find it very useful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, you, you can again. always find us online and ping us through or send an email through or come on next week and um and, and ask a question there. All right. But um thanks very much, Dennis. Thanks very much See everyone you, for joining. Bye bye. Bye-bye.